Hey there. Hello. We are live. So I'll wait for a few people to come on. In uh, the meantime, got my, got my favorite coffee cup here. Papa Bear that my kids got me. So that's good. Ah, so let me uncover my paints. You can kind of see what I'm going to do here. I've got, uh, just like I said, kind of in the, in the warm up, I really have a, just a real simple palette with blue, cerulean blue, titanium white. That's uh, Payne's gray, which is real close to black, so you can use black. Magenta, I've got a green, a little dark green. You could use sap green or hooker green. This is uh, light. I think that is bright aqua and then a little bit of cadmium orange. So I've got a trusty spray bottle to kind of keep them damp. And but to start off, we're going to use the pencil. So we're going to, I usually uh, like to sketch what I'm painting. So I've got the reference photo right up here. You can see it. And so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a little bit of a sketch. I'm not, not, not going to try to draw every detail, but uh, I'm going to just kind of figure out about where half of this canvas is roughly up and down. And so if you look at the reference photo, there's, there's a cross across it. That's for y'all. My reference photos actually doesn't have any kind of grid or anything on it, so... I'm going to uh, I'm going to start sketching this bird, and so I'm just going to put a few marks, maybe about where its head starts, and so looks like it starts about right, right in here, and then I'm going to put a little mark about where his body ends, and so somewhere, somewhere down in here, not trying to be super specific hey alex hey cody we got this thing going so we got some other folks coming on all right now we're gonna we're gonna draw we're gonna kind of start drawing the shapes of this bird's body and so the bird itself is kind of shaped about like uh an almond i would say kind of flat on one side here about like that and then we have a little bit more of a sweeping sweeping angle here so anyway uh, hey Megan Moore hello hello glad you could join me so now just a little bit about the drawing we're gonna I'm gonna use something uh, that I do sometimes you know so I'm kind of comparing the body to the head you know so looking at the picture actually the neck and the head you know are not much shorter than the actual body so so really I, I'm looking at my head placement needs to come up a little bit so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that it needs to be about like that so we're really we're really gonna bring our head up just so that our proportions look good so put just a little mark here for where the head is gonna go and he's kind of cool the way he's kind of looking off in the distance. And so he's got a little crook in his neck. I use this to be about where that goes. And then we're just going to draw it in just roughly. We'll make all kinds of corrections to the paint. So and we got his neck coming up here. I'm gonna give him a little bit of a. They're often, they're kind of looking like this, looking off into the distance. This bird, I think, was kind of keeping me in the corner of his eye because I, I was trying to take a picture of this bird. And so he, he, wasn't, he wasn't too happy that I was very close to him. He, he was hunting fish. He was like, yeah, the jetties were a lot of bait running along the jetty. So that's when you'll see these kind of birds out and uh, look into... Uh, you know, catch some fish. So 
Now we're just going to put a little mark for about where his beak is. Nothing, nothing too crazy. So this is, this is about what we're going to do for the bird here. We're not going to, we're not going to do much other than I might, might put a little indication of where one leg goes and then his other leg is down here about where his tail feathers are. So we'll put a little mark there as well. And so, Hey Ray, what's happening? Got my, got my Ray McQuan on there. My brother-in-law, he's watching. So that's good. I appreciate that. And, uh, hope y'all have fun. I'm not going to talk a tremendous amount. So I'm going to try to work on this, work on this painting while we talk here. So now we're going to, I'm going to sketch in a little bit of the rocks, just the shapes, the major shapes of these rocks, nothing real fancy. I'm not going to try to copy these rocks exactly, but, uh, just going to put some marks. You know, some holding my pencil way down on the end. So I'm not trying to be all super precise. So I'm going to say that that rocks about even coming out into the water and it kind of ends about right here. So that's a good enough, good enough to get started with. So now down here it is down there at his legs. We got this angle and measure it. I like to measure it with my pencil. Hey, Aunt Linda and Uncle Leon, hello. How are y'all this morning? I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink my coffee at the same time here. I paint on Saturday, so, you know, I figured if I got some new camera gear, so I'll just go live for who wants to watch. Watch me do some painting. Or just relax. That's kind of how I relax, really. I uh, I work all week, and so on the weekends I paint my paintings. That's how I relax. So here's here's that rock kind of down in the bottom corner. Once again, we're not gonna get too crazy with the accuracy of it. Got another rock coming this way. We'll paint them in here in just a second. We're almost done with the sketch, guys. Believe it or not, that's that's about all the sketching we're gonna do. And so I just want to make sure I kind of get the, get a composition. Now, now that I have a sketch, I'll, I'll kind of make a few marks where a few waves are. I see a few waves. We're going to, we're going to try to paint some of this water to be fairly realistic. If we can, we're going to follow the reference photo and try to, try to make this thing look like, look like the water is kind of move in the way it is. So we're not going to guess at the water too much. We're going to just do it. If y'all have some questions, just put them in the comments. And uh, if I see them, I'm looking at like five screens at once. But if you have a question or a comment, I'll say uh, that's kind of cool. And I'll, I'll try to figure out some answers for you. And so I'm a self-taught artist. I, uh, in fact, my aunt Linda, who's on here watching, she is an incredible portrait artist. And to be honest, she was my inspiration. So I am honored that she's actually even watching this. So love you. Love you very much. Love all of you. All right. So just a few marks. That's all we're doing for the, for the whole, uh, you know, bird. I might put just a little indication here of where he's kind of got a little shadow. So the darks kind of matter to me just where these shadows are and lights, that sort of thing. Hello, Sherry Foy. How are you? Long time no see, girl. So now that now that I've got a little sketch done here. I'm going to uh, actually grab me a flat brush. This is a uh, number four flat. And I'm going to place a few darks. When I say darks, I mean kind of dark paint to kind of indicate where this shadow is. And I'm going to go dark at first. I may lighten this up. And so just painting down 
this bird and making a few marks where where I think the darkest darks might be. And so not being too careful either. So now we're going to put just a little line. There we go. We're done, right? No, we're not done. Not even close. We're going to we're going to work on this thing for a while. So so grab a chair and hang out. All right. Put a little bit of shadow on the back of this bird's neck. So we think he's... The sun must be actually hitting this bird from this way, right? So that's that's a good. We've kind of figured out the light, where it's coming from. Put a little dark up here to indicate where his head's going to be. Just a little bit of black. It's not really black. It's Payne's gray. And so, cool thing about this... Payne's gray is you can always go a little darker. So I'm not, not completely boxed in with this, with this color. Now, I'm going to kind of take a look at some of this. I'm going to scrub in a little bit of dark color where these rocks are a little darker as well. The cool thing about our paint is that... Uh, oh, somebody asked me if I could keep my head out of the camera. Man... I don't know. I've got a really big head. So, you know, we'll, we'll give it a whirl. So, we'll, we may make an adjustment on the camera here in a minute. So, this is the first go on our live stream. I'm not sure who asked that. But, you know, I'm going to put my, look at my head. Oh, my goodness. You can't see nothing when I do that. You're right. I got to keep my head out of the shot. It's pretty funny. Maybe I need to drink more coffee. I'm still still waking up. All right, here we go. So, how's that? Is that a little better? I'm not worried about my head in the painting. I'm worried about the painting, people. We're gonna we're gonna make a good painting. If you see the back of my head, then you know uh, it won't be there for long. All right. Just because we're painting on this side, right? So a little dark spot here. Just making a little, little bit of a color map. All right. Now I'm going to mix up a little bit of a watercolor. Because we're going to start blocking in. We're going to start blocking in this thing. First we're going to, I think actually no. We're going we're gonna to paint a little bit of dark down here where this rock is. And so just kind of make sure... I know what's going on with this rock. There we go. So that's enough. That's enough of that. So we know these rocks are real light. These are kind of where the shadows are on the rocks. And we've got our bird right here. An indication of where his leg goes. All right. So now, let's make some watercolor. A little bit of color for this water. It's a very light green uh, where the uh, actual waves are and so I like to mix a little bit of cerulean blue with this green and I like to maybe think about going just a little bit darker on this and so I might add just a little bit of this Payne's gray to my mix and so that I get a little bit darker than, than that so we'll see how this looks so we can always make a little change. Cool thing is, is these are transparent colors. So just kind of indicating where some of these darker spots are. We'll, we'll take a look and see if that's going to be dark enough. The, the interesting thing about painting is, is you really have to have all of the, uh, all of the watercolor. I need to cover the whole canvas really kind of quickly. So, I like to do that because, to be honest, let's see here. I like that. that that's not a bad color. Right? So, we can kind of see here's a little bit of a lighter color. And that's, uh, I just added a little white and cerulean blue to my mix. So, now, now I'm painting a little bit, a little bit brighter. So, now that I like it. 
Oh, Tr Tracy. Hey, Tracy Marlowe, my friend. How are you? Hey, let me ask my assistant for some help. Hey, I've got my water in the kitchen, the two water things that I rinse my brush in. I need that. We gotta be able to keep our brush clean here. So, for the moment, we're gonna get a bigger brush. That's what we're gonna do. So, just a few tests, just put a few dabs. Oh, here we go. Thank you. So, just a little pro tip. I always use two glasses of water. You can kind of see them here on the side. And so, with the first glass of water, I can rinse most of the paint off of my brush until it's fairly clean. And then I can put it in a second glass of water and really do some real damage in terms of cleaning it. So, that's, that's how I do that. So now, we're going to make some more of that watercolor, that blue, lighter blue watercolor. We're going to, we're going to get busy with this thing. So, ooh, that's, that's a little too blue. Add a little bit of that green. Put that cerulean blue, just a little bit darker. There we go. See how that is. Yeah, that's a little better. That's about what we want. Pretty close to that, yeah. So now I'm gonna block in all this water. And I'm gonna to be able to start really seeing what's happening. Let's see, what is, uh, any happy little trees? That's from Tracy. That is uh, Bob Ross. And, uh, and I don't paint uh, any happy trees unless I'm painting the landscape. But this morning, you know, we're going for uh, like happy water. Actually, that's what we're doing. I, 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 uh, I respect Bob Ross, but you know, we're, we're painting a bird. We're not, we're not going to just do what we want to do here on this paint. We are actually going to paint uh, from a photograph. So, all right, and it's going to be painted in layers. So, what you see now is what we call the first layer is actually just the block in. So, we're just getting some color, and we're going to cover the whole canvas. So that way, we can start layering in details and that sort of thing. So, I'm going to kind of be careful and go around this bird here. And since we're painting the water, mostly going to do horizontal strokes here. And so, good secret is, you know, if you're painting the sky, you may want to do some kind of crisscross pattern or something of that nature. But, you know, since we're painting some water here, at least the underpainting of the water, we want, you know, some, some horizontal strokes. So... And I'm mixing paint as I go. I know about what the mix is, but I want some variability too. I don't want just a flat color. Adds interest if we have, you know, a little bit of variability in terms of the colors on the water. And then once again, we'll, we're going to put those darker waves in. We may lighten this up a little bit at the same time, but I want something that looks pretty. So here we go. We got something a little greener. I think that that may add add to what we're trying to do. So, all right. So what's everybody doing this week? Y'all have fun this week? Everybody work this week or you're off vacation? What are, are y'all doing this summer? It's uh, kids are starting to get ready to get out of school. Somebody, somebody dropped me a line on something cool they did. 
I will tell you something cool to do uh, today. If you have time later, I will tell you right now that blackberries actually are in, they are perfect. They're ripe, at least in my yard. I use that as an indicator of when I need to go and actually collect a bunch of them. So I think maybe later today, I'm going to actually collect a bunch of blackberries. So let me scrub some of this paint on here. Once again, this is just the, just the bottom layer where I paint probably oh, three or four layers on this painting. So once we get the underpainting in, then I'll start working on the bird. So we'll paint this water for just a little bit, a little bit longer, get around this bird. So Ray, what you what you talking about with this eye surgery? You have you have your eye surgery done? Cataract, Cataract surgery? That's uh well, how are you doing? You hanging in there? Hopefully you're feeling good and uh, recovering well. I think I need to go get some glasses, but uh, my doctor, last time I talked to him, he said, you know, he actually said, you have the early, early signs of cataracts to me as well. So, and I have a few other friends are about my age, said that it's, it's fairly common, I guess. And so it's kind of a shame, but you know, as we get older, start to have, have issues. And certainly, you know, we're not super old here, but definitely getting there. <laughs> so anyway, I hope, hopefully your recovery goes well, Ray. I'm, uh, I'm sure it will. What's up, Marcus? You doing all right? It's good to see you on here. I need some sheetrock work done if you want to come by later. Just kidding. Not really kidding. I, I always need some, uh, little, my, uh, my cousin Marcus, he's, he's the sheetrock guru. So I'll give him a free shout out for Merck Drywall. That's, that's the, it's the best sheetrock company in town for sure. But, uh, anyway, it's good to, good to see you guys. I'm, uh, Happy you are on here. Pauline Brown, what's up girl? Hadn't sent you, uh, let's see. It's been a long time since high school or around town, probably at Walmart or something, huh? We still live in our same hometown where we went to high school. But uh, it's good to see you. Hi. Thanks for watching. I, uh, I paint every Saturday, actually. So this is really nothing new for me, other than the fact that I just got, I just went ahead and put some camera equipment in so so some folks could watch. I really got the idea from uh, doing a little event up at the lake. I had some, I had a few friends up there and they just enjoyed watching. So I figure if I put this together and start doing it, and if they, figure it out then they'll be able to watch and so especially some little kids that enjoyed watching me paint uh i painted a bluegill i think with uh you know cane pole i painted it live as a friend of ours opened a actual uh business and so they had a big grand opening festival so i went up there i told her i would go up there and actually do my thing and paint live and bring my paintings. Sherry, what's up, girl? So, paints uh, furniture, huh? That's, uh, that, that'd be a cool video. Oh, yeah. Well, you're going to have to ask my wife to paint some furniture because, you know, Glenda, she's the furniture painter. She did paint some really nice furniture here lately. 
she just finished a piece that actually looks beautiful. She she painted a couple of uh, really nice end tables that uh, we brought to the lake and uh, put put at our lake house. And uh, she is she's doing it. She's practicing doing it. She likes to do it. So, um, but yeah, you just need to talk to Glenda. She's the furniture painter. I I. Uh, she doesn't let me actually uh, shellac or varnish or, or do anything. Look at this. Does this look like a good varnish job? No. No. I, I'm more about painting and color. I don't like the varnish thing. So if you see my head, I apologize. But yeah, it's too bad. So here we go. I'm still still working on this little bit of water. So I want to get this one part done real quickly. And then we're going to move on to the bird and the rocks until we have the whole painting covered up. And then we'll, then we'll actually start doing the fun part and, and start actually breaking these birds down, breaking the water down. So now just looking at the reference photo, the, the water's pretty flat. So I'm going to use some artistic license and actually you know, probably bring a little more interest to this water. And so sometimes when I have a reference photo like this, where I really like, you know, I like what the bird's doing. And so, but I don't necessarily like, you know, the fact that the water's kind of, you know, not, doesn't have a lot going on. So I may, I may actually put some interest in what the water's doing on this painting. So that's the cool thing about painting is so, you know, really, I use the reference photo like this, but I only use it as a guide to kind of, you know, especially when it gets to this elaborate water patterns, you know, I use it as a guide more than a, you know, than a rule. I'm not going to just, you know, absolutely be a slave to this thing. So now I'm going to try to mix a little color for this bird. So that bird's kind of a silverish gray, but look at him close. There's, there's four or five values in there. So I'm going to uh, get another brush. I'm going to wash this one out a little bit and set it to the side. Good news is, is uh, I have a plethora of brushes. So let's get a little bit smaller brush to kind of paint him. And so we're going to start off with this. This ain't a small brush, folks. This is a number eight. <laughs> So, but that's a small brush for me. I like to paint with, uh, at least on the underpainting, I like to keep the underpainting uh, very loose. So, now, with this, I'm going to add a little bit of the sky color, uh, which would have probably been sort of this blue color, to a really, a, you know, black and white mixture. So, maybe a gray, but I cooled it down with a cerulean blue. And so that's, that's what I'm going to start with and just see if we like it on this bird. So I'm going to start up here at the top. Now, my strokes on this bird are going to just follow the pattern of the feathers, right? We're just going to go straight down with it. And I'm going to try to, try to actually at least get his body. His body is gray gray-ish with some definitely some highlights we can see where the sun hits him but we'll be able to paint those in over this gray because we're using a transparent paint Jeannie Payne what's up girl let's see what is what is uh work oh work friend of mine huh stop talking and work more that's what she said she said get to work okay I'm going to get to work. Oh, she is my work friend. Oh, well, I think she's my wife's work friend. So from, from uh, the banking industry, that's awesome. I'm, I'm starting to get some, uh, get a little bit of input from my wife over here. She's, she's watching my chat for me just for a little while. I don't know how long I can keep her, but anyway, so we've got this, just this basic shape. 
Now for the, the head and neck, we're not gonna go completely white on this thing. In fact, I'm gonna try to make, with a very small brush, a slightly warmer color. So I'm gonna get a little bit of this cad orange. This, since that's what I got in my palette here. And I'm gonna make this gray slightly warmer. And to that kind of like, it's almost like a rusty color on their neck a lot of times, the, the feathers. And so we're gonna see what this looks like. Ah, it's a little bit too dark, too gray, so we'll add a little bit of white to that mixture. A little more orange, just for now. We'll tone it back if we need to, but yeah, that's a little better. I like, don't like it completely yet, but we're still, we're still figuring out what we want to do. So I'm actually going to bring this neck over a little bit too. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this warm color in here this way. All right. And while we're at it, we're going to put just a little bit of warm color around the bottom of this beak. So we're going to, we're going to get a different color. We'll use a little bit of yellow, just a little bit. Add it to some of this orange. A little more yellow, a little more white here. And that is going to give us this kind of orangey yellowish color. More on the yellow side. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of an indication as to where this bottom beak is going to be. Because it's actually, actually in the sun, and it's it's kind of a yellowish color. We're not gonna paint a lot on it. So when I move my head, you can see what's happening. There you go. How's that? Who's out there shouting about my head? Oh, my wife, Glinda. She's the one that says she can see. Well, you know what, Glinda? I know, but that's that's gonna happen. So we'll be okay. The people can see afterwards. All right. Now we're gonna, we're gonna do something that's gonna bring this bird bird to life a little bit. So we're gonna, we're gonna use some pure white just for a minute. May darken it. Generally, you don't want to paint with pure white, but I am right now, and so because it'll blend, it'll mix. So we're gonna put a, just a little bit of white here. And I'm going to give him just a little more right here of a curve to his neck. And we're going to put a little bit of white up here on his head. Let's just do that. And just put a little bit in here. We're going to scrub some white all in here. We're going to put his eye here in a minute. What's up, Travis? What's happening, man? We're just getting started on this thing. All right, got some people. Didn't know what was gonna happen with this thing, really. So these are my true friends trying to help me out on this thing. I appreciate it. All right, so now we got pretty decent, decent head shape. So we're gonna put a few darks and actually see what we think about in terms of the beak. Once again, we're gonna reshape all of this, so. But his beak is actually a little thicker on the top. We're gonna make that, make that go down. Touch this other one. Bring it down. Paint across this thing a little bit. And his peak kinda comes in all the way to his eyeball, which is somewhere in here. Right now, I want to paint a few details in there. It's not a giant painting, so we'll, we'll be kind of limited as to how crazy elaborate we could be with him. But we're starting to see a bird. It's not too bad. I'm going to actually darken this spot back here. So we can kind of change this bird as we go. All right. So now... 
darken this shadow area a little bit. Emily, what's up, girl? Hey, how are you? I see your comment there. Love it. I love you guys. I hope you are having a good day. Um, I'm having fun, as usual, doing my thing here. Just painting away. So, put his leg really in there. Kind of got a little, little crooked nature to his leg there. And this this leg's a little brighter. We'll, we'll get to that. So, comes down about like that. So, now, I'm start, start kind of doing a few whoop de doos here. That's a technical term, whoop de doos And so, just kind of making this a little bit of a feather pattern. Kind of indicate where a few feathers are. Now that I got some dark paint on my brush, I'm going to start kind of darkening some of this gray where the bird is just a little bit darker. And so here at the top, kind of down the midsection really, but maybe at an angle. He's a little bit darker this way. And so... And this shape is obviously too symmetrical at this point, so we're gonna we're gonna work on that. So now I'm gonna take my white. Now I'm gonna whiten up this earlier bird mixture that I had. And so now that I've painted for just a little while, I like to take my water bottle. Ching, see this? Well, it's probably about five dollars at Michael's, but it's a cool mister. It sprays a mist, so. I just give my paints a couple of mists and that keeps the acrylic paints from drying up. They, they dry so quickly. In fact, uh, it's really hard to uh, do much blending as, as most people complain about acrylics. They're like, I can't really get much blending, but I'm gonna show y'all some secrets here in a little bit where you maybe can get a little more blending than you think. And so we're gonna, we're gonna do something called some dry, dry brush blending. And so that's gonna, that's gonna help quite a lot. So we're gonna put a couple streaks in here. We got, uh, we got the light hitting the bird over here for sure. So I'm gonna brighten this area up. Don't be too crazy with the details. Cause like I said, this is a small painting. This is a 16 by 20. So it's not like we can get in here and really detail every feather. So we just want to kind of give the illusion that we've got feathers by streaking down, down with the feather pattern, right? And stay with it. Almost like if you were painting some hair or something, you want to, if you're painting hair, you want to kind of stay with the pattern. How is this hair doing? So now we're going to come down here. There's a really bright spot right in here. And so I'm going to kind of just Put my brush down and scrape up, you know, it's really lighten this spot up. And this, this is, uh, this is obviously some feathers over here are catching a lot more light. And so I'm actually going to grab some pure white even, and I'm going to just, just outline it just a little bit over here. We'll have to reestablish some of this. And so, yeah. Just come in here with just a few more of these, these feathers. Just barely touching the canvas and kind of streaking downwards. And so over here we got some light things happening as well. Alright. So, yeah. Now let's see what we can do up here. There's a little bit of a light spot right here actually on his neck. And now we're going to start to establish a little bit brighter. So since these paints are transparent, the more layers that you paint of a specific color, so let's say if you're white, the whiter that area is going to get, you know? So we're going to really start to start to make some of this white area here whiter. And so, just from something I know about these birds, they got this little little throat patch that comes under them. So just putting a little white paint under there. And now we're going to start brightening this up. 
here in a little bit we'll start trying to paint some details on this on this bird's beak and so I'm gonna add just a little bit of white a little bit of white just kind of flatten this out just a little bit so it starts to look like him a little more but we're gonna work towards this bird all right so that's a it's a pretty good block in on this bird so I'm not too unhappy with two or three things I'm starting to look at at this stage. You know, kind of how wide is the body compared to his neck and his head. So my bird might be looking off a little bit further this way than away from me. I kind of like that. So I might, I might just leave that just like it is. Now we're going to start working on the rocks here. So we'll make us a little mixture for the rocks. Get a little bigger brush. We're gonna start painting some of the brighter part of the rocks first. And so once again, I'm gonna get some orange. And I think I'm gonna get some of this magenta. And magenta is really strong. So now I'm gonna grab some of this, some of these other colors, kind of bring them in. And so what that does is it provides a sense of harmony to the painting. So so it, it really makes a cohesive kind of painting. You want your you want your colors to actually be somewhat reflected in the other colors, right? So so right now we are much too pink. So we're definitely gonna go with some yellow and some orange. Just a dab of brush in there. And we're actually gonna go just a little bit darker too. See how this looks. So we got this kind of grayed down mixture with a lot of orange in it. Even almost a brownish color. Thirty-eight minutes. Oh Ray says thirty-eight minutes already a bird, huh? Well, you know, this is this is a rough kind of bird here. This this is this is nothing, man. We're we're gonna take we're gonna rock this bird out, man. We're not playing, we're gonna make something cool. So you can't make something super cool in 38 minutes, but you know, we already have a bird taking shape, which is, which is nice. Thank you very much for that. So we're just gonna put a little a bit of this color. We may still adjust this color of these rocks, paint some of these, some of these brighter colors here. I'm not being too careful. I said, no, I'm coming back. I know I'm coming back to these for sure. And I'm not 100% too worried about getting the color of these granite rocks. These are granite rocks out there at the jetties. They're always, uh, always amazes me, really, how they got all this granite down to the beach. And in fact, it took me a while to figure out, but I learned that what they did is they actually put this granite on rail cars from up the country. They broke it off and, and uh, actually transported it down to the beach by rail. And we certainly wouldn't do that anymore, but um, we don't seem to build stuff like that anymore. But anyway, it's pretty cool. Granite's hard, very hard rock. And it's very hard to paint granite, so we're gonna, we are going to try to find the shapes within the rock. And so we know there are some kind of darker colors, so start making a couple values. And so make something just a little bit darker and I'm going to put just a little indication of some, some kind of, you know, darker spots in this rock. I'm not doing anything crazy. So, so I'll put a little bit of dark right there and some up here as well. And down here for sure, we got a lot, it's a lot darker down here and I'll come down and, and actually start painting some real darks under this bird. Grab a little bit smaller brush. Paint in between his leg, in between his legs here. Don't anybody joke about that. <laughs> there we go. So go a little bit, a little bit uh, brighter. Just because his legs are black, so don't get too dark next to those play. I don't want to. I don't want to wash those out. So we're just gonna we're gonna keep it 
like that. And now we're going to get a little bit darker than that even. And we're going to start really making some contrast. So, so just, just trying to figure out where the darkest darks are. Once again, this is not a, not close to the end here, but we're still starting to establish where these shadows are in the block in. All right, a little more dark, especially where this, where this rock kind of, I think this rock is going to be a little more straight than that. And scrub in a little black. All right. And while I'm at it, add a little more shadow on this side of the bird. Because as I look at that bird, it's quite a bit darker over here. So we're going to just keep adding, adding some layers. So that way. Now, we're going to do something cool. We're going to take a completely dry brush, one that's completely, doesn't have any paint on it at all, right? And so, but very quickly, we're going to do a little blending, right? So now they, they claim that you cannot blend this stuff very well, but, and you can't blend it as well as oil paint, right? But we can, we can start to smudge all this stuff together, right? So we got us a little bit of a, a line here, so we don't want that. We'll work on that. But we're gonna just blend this out just a little bit. Just a hair, not a lot. All right. So now down here, we got a little bit greener, a little bit greener rock. Because the algae's grown on this rock. Because it gets wet more often. And so mix in, once again, you're going to start to see me mix all the paints up, but we're going to get a little bit of a green color, but much darker than the water. We want darker than that. So a little bit darker value, which I think will be cool. Then we'll add some lighter values on top of that. So all the, all the things that you see in a painting, generally you need at least three, three different values or three different colors, right? So you need, you need sort of the mid-tone, mid-color, you know, mid-value. And then you also need, you need sort of the darkest dark colors. And those are, those are the things that are kind of in shadow or thicker, darker things. And then uh, where the uh, light hits, obviously those are going to be the highlights. And so we'll put the highlights in towards the end. So, so once again, we're just still wanting to cover the whole painting. So now we got this got this greenish color. This rock has a line that kind of goes about like this somewhere in here. And so now that I see my paint's not flowing as well, once again I'm just going to give it a couple of mists with the water and you're going to see a big difference in how this paint comes off the brush. Watch. Look at that. Isn't that some? All right. Joe Conesales. What's happening, my man? You doing all right? Just doing my thing here. Just painting. Figured, figured people might want to watch. So I, I have to say for my first stream, it is quite a challenge to be able to get all of these things to work together. So here's the reference photo. You can see my paints mix up and you can kind of see the bird, bird I'm working on here. So now let's do something pretty dark for this rock here under the bird. So we're going to get something pretty dark right in there. A little bit darker than we need. And I think there's actually a peak on this rock about right here. So we're going to put in that dark area. A little bit darker than what we had for that other rock. Once again, we're just, we're just getting started. But I think that rock kind of comes up and makes a corner right there, which is kind of cool. And I want, I want to capture that. So it kind of makes a corner right in here somewhere. 
And so these rocks are, they're all kind of squared off and uh, they're shaped like blocks for the most part if you're down at the jetty. So, so now I'm adding some dark down here just on purpose because I want to, uh, I want to create a little bit of a vignette effect. So I want this dark here, dark here, and I may even darken the water here and here, and that brings the eye. It just moves the eye to the bird. So that's what we want to do is we want to, we want to create some movement. So it kind of follows what I want to do with every painting. So first I want a composition. So you can see this bird, there is something called the rule of thirds. So this bird is sitting about a third of the way on the canvas. And that's a, that's a focal point in a painting. So the rule of third. And so this head is roughly, you know, maybe not quite a third, but it, the interesting part is right here. So some painters call this the hot spot on their painting, right? And so we want to make sure that the eye catches what's going on. The, the story of this painting is this bird and what he's doing by the water. So, so anyway, that is what we're shooting for. And if you're wondering why I paint, that's kind of what I want to do is I want to, I want to convey uh, to folks kind of what is out there, the micro cool things that you can see, you know, if you actually are out there fishing or, or just driving down the beach, you know, there's lots of cool things to look at. So this is one thing that we want to do. So now that we have this thing completely dried in, you might be thinking, well, we got to let this thing dry for a long time, but actually the top part of this painting is already dry. That's how quick this stuff dries. And so we can actually just right away start painting another layer. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna mix up an even wider version of what we were doing earlier with this, with these rocks. And we're just gonna see experimentally if I like it or not add just a little bit of the previous color mixture. All right, so we got a very light version of that. So, so now I'm gonna to try to actually get in here and actually stipple in, kind of make some details of where this, this rock edge is. So now we're, now we're gonna get a little more specific on what we're doing. So, and I can already tell that it's a little bit too yellowish orange for me. So I'm definitely going to go back and add a little bit of a little bit of more reddish or maybe that magenta color. Granite's kind of a weird thing. It's a lot of colors actually. Granite is not is not a color. Granite is a rock with a lot of colors. <laughs> so so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put a lot of color in this thing. But we're going to pay attention to more attention to where it is bright and dark than anything else. We're not going to try to paint uh, the, the individual crystals of uh, quartz that are in this granite. But instead, at first, we're just going to try to make a shape that makes sense. So I'm looking at the reference photo and I'm trying to lighten the spots on this particular rock that I think are light. And so that's all I'm doing here. Just trying to get us a, a sense that this is a little bit lighter area of the rock. And, and so there's a sort of this darker spot that comes down. So this is in shadow here. So we want to leave that and uh, continue on just in the areas where the rock is a little bit lighter. And so it kind of makes a shape like this. That's what, that's what it does right there. So, and then over here, we've got a couple little areas where we got this interesting shape here. I like that. But, but I'm, I'm leaving some of this dark in between so that we keep some of that shadow. So this is not the brightest bright we're going to use on this by far. And so 
come up here and soften this just a little bit so it's not such a hard hard edge just yet and the light is hitting this rock here so there we go now Now, I did notice that on this side, it's just a little bit brighter. Uh, a little bit of a reddish tone over here. So, I'm not using red per se, I'm using magenta. But it's still a warm reddish color, so it'll, it'll get the job done. And on this side, it is also a little warmer. And that's because that's where the light is coming from. But now, this, this particular rock is uh is catching a lot of the water and it's getting wet quite often so a lot of times those rocks are dark dark in color so now we're coming a little closer so we're gonna make us a little bit brighter color the cool thing about things in the distance you want to bring depth to where something is a little bit closer to you what we got to do is we got to increase the contrast so so I'm going to try to make the corner of this rock here. I thought it was interesting. And it uh, adds the concept that these rocks have shape. So you see this is quite a bit brighter than this up here. And I'm going to make a very straight, straight-ish line and come right through here with it. So there we go. I'm kind of going under this bird here with this rock. That's about where the corner is. And so, yeah, looking at the photo, I think that we need to put that corner really about right here. So I'm going to kind of, we're going to kind of work on this face as a, this is, this is the top of the rock, makes a corner right here. And there's a little bit of things happening under here where the light's catching some of the rough edges of the rock. We're not going to get too detailed in here. And then we're going to darken this area up quite a bit. So, But this is where this rock kind of makes a corner. And uh, we're going to certainly make some very bright marks, like right in here, to indicate that the light is hitting the top of this rock. And so go with some pure white and mix it with just a touch of my color. And I'm going to bring my brush just down about where I think that corner is and it kind of goes through this bird's leg kind of stops about right there but we're going to kind of emphasize it a little bit bring it down bring it down all the way down to the water actually all the way down behind this other rock and so brighten this a little bright spot there's a little bright spot on the top of this thing and I think that's kind of cool because that's where this rock kind of catches the light as well from the sun. And that's a it's the corner of the rock. So I always think about kind of where's the shadows, where's the light. And right now I'm just putting some indications for myself later so I can put the right colors where they go. So we got this rock kind of here and we got another rock that is even brighter right here so we're gonna we're gonna add a little more white to our mix that's gonna help us to actually bring this rock forward and uh, get him get him closer where he actually is so we're gonna start putting some a little bit brighter color over here on the top of this rock there we go so just with that we're starting to see you know that this rock is a little closer this one's a little further back we've got our bird and this this rock behind it so so we're already starting to do a little bit of what we want to do just based on the contrast how much contrast we're using so now we're going to put some of these darks back in we use a pretty warm dark so mixing a little bit of that magenta in here and so like would like to make this a little bit darker this part of the rock so there we go all right so we're not gonna we're gonna spend all day on this rock but we're gonna go back 
and start to paint some of the water in so that it's not such a stark background. And so we're going to do two things. We're going to we're going to paint some lighter values where the light is hitting the water. And we're going to paint some darker values where we see some of those waves, some of those darker spots. So, and I'm going to use the reference photo to kind of give me the indication of where those are. So now we're going to get us some of this, this black, a little bit of cerulean blue, and a little bit of green to make a fairly dark blue-green color here. Not a lot of it, but just some of it. And I'm going to use a fairly fine brush. And so this is a number two flat, a really long brush. I can, um, this one I bought at Hobby Lobby. It's Master's Touch Flat. I like this, this particular brush. It really does pretty good on details a little bit later. We'll even get the liner brush out later and really start doing some stuff. So we see there's some broken, there's some kind of broken waves right in here. We're just going to indicate about where they are. So, and it kind of bends up. When you're looking at water, especially if you look at the top of this reference photo, you're going to see that I'm going to paint this entire, entire wave. It really looks like it's kind of broken and random, but it's really not if you look at it closely. If you look at it closely, it, it kind of kind of comes together. So this is actually a wave coming coming down. And so there's another wave, like about right here. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of color right here and a little spot here. Okay, nothing too crazy. And that wave kind of has a little peak about right here. So put that there. Now. Got a little taller wave. So what happens in the taller waves is that they actually the base of those waves are a little darker. So there's one right in here, right above his head. So it doesn't matter if it's exact where it needs to be. Like I said, we're just using the using this picture as truly what it is, just reference. So we're we're paint what we want. Not to mention. Your reference photo is a lot bigger than mine. Look how tiny, look how tiny my photo is. Wow, oh, can't see. I need to get, uh, I need to get some new uh, glasses for sure. So, anyway, I'm gonna keep going here. If you dropped off and uh, you want to come back later. That's cool too, because I'm going to continue to paint and uh, make this thing work out. And it's going to look cool and uh, probably probably paint another two or three layers. So you'll you'll see it come together over the day. So so don't feel bad if you have to go. I understand. You can watch the grass grow sometimes if you want. That's kind of a cool thing to do. Now I'm just talking to myself, I think. All right. So, now we're going to put this little line here. It's another, there is another wave kind of coming this way. Going through the head like this. That's about right. We got another one about right here. And comes in here. Now, let's put some of these in here. This this uh, this is a little more interesting waves that are down here, and you won't really see them until I start putting some of the lighter colors. Right, just putting some indication of where these things are. Not being too careful about it, really. Kind of going around. I'm seeing where the shapes of these waves are. Yeah. yeah in fact, I'm not, not going to pay 100% attention to all of it. 
just gonna do what I want. All right, now we're give us a little indication of this. This wave is kind of interesting. It's like a little heel right in here where it hits this rock. And I think this is where we can add some real interest to what the water is going to look like. I think I think right there we're going to make we're going to make our play for some more interesting water, right? And so just going to start putting some strokes in line with the direction of the water. In fact, got another wave. This is a very cool wave. Kind of comes up with a point here. And comes down about mid-body. So we're going to put that one in there. Losing some of my dark here. Make it a little darker. There we go. Just a little bit of an indication on where that wave is. By putting the darks in first, kind of helps me understand what these waves are doing. Kind of the dynamics of it. So now we're going to move on to some lighter colors. And so um, I'm actually going to take my brush, larger brush, rinse it off. In fact, I may have to, may have to step away and grab some more paper towels here in a minute. So we'll see. I've got one here. Oh, I see so. Never mind. Almost fully prepared. So, gotta have some paper towels. Dry your paintbrush off. Alright. Now we're gonna take the number eight. Actually, uh, took this picture of this bird. Well, me and Glenda were going to Galveston. And we stopped. We've been to the Texas City Dike, so we went down there from Texas City right on 146 before you get to Galveston. And so we decided it might be kind of cool to cool to go there. All right. So now you can see I'm knocking in some of these lighter colors, but not everywhere. Because I want to leave some of that mid-tone value. And so, yeah, just where I see the brightest sprites, which are going to generally be right on top of these waves. And so, I'm going to use this uh, to kind of carve out some spots. Now, this takes a little bit of practice. And... And there are people that are better at everything than you. So don't worry about it too much. Just keep going. That's the main thing. Just keep doing it. And you'll get better and better at it. And so, so will I, hopefully. That's, that's the real key, right? I need to get better. All right. So now, we are getting some, getting somewhere on these waves. All right, we don't want to get too crazy with this value around the bird here. I don't want the bird to get lost. He is kind of lost in this uh, water in the photograph, but in our painting, I don't want to. I want to keep him vibrant. So now we're stroking a few of these lighter colors. Now, now that my brush See my brush kind of getting to where it's a little bit empty. So what I'm going to do, still going horizontally. Now, go knock down any kind of rough edges, right? And I'm actually going to start just rubbing it. And what that does is it's actually blending in a little bit. Let's see when we can do it left-handed. Look at that. 
Can't do it left handed. <laughs> I can't do anything left handed. I'm right handed. Anyway, I'm just going to keep painting this thing. See what we like in the end here. All right, so now, yeah, we down to the more interesting part of the water. I do like to paint water. It's pretty relaxing. And some people don't like to paint water, but I say that's fun. So the challenge, that's what you need. Challenge. It's not fun to paint. It's not fun to paint things that are easy. Or you'd be finished. You'd be finished immediately. So I see a very bright spot right there. Kind of add a little, even a little another value. It's a little bit wider, wider mix. I'm gonna start trying to focus in on some of this wider stuff. Yeah, these are these are almost like highlights in the water. It's a big brush to be doing this, but once again, we're just we're just playing around with the shapes of this thing. You can see that even, even though we're not painting a lot of details, we're starting to get that effect, right? That effect that we're looking at some water. That's really, that's really all we're after here. We want to see what we can do. And by adding that little bit of brighter mix, we're adding a little contrast and we're, we're making this water, we're going to make this water closer to us than the other water, which is further away. So go back to that a little bit darker mix and just put a few indications over here. All right. I'm not going to go too crazy with the water yet. So we're still, we're still a couple layers away. So, yeah. Now let's, let's get a little bit more, a little bit more of this water. So, now we're seeing that we're kind of sculpting, sculpting these ripples in. We're, we're going to get real, real detailed on the water, but not right now. We're just kind of, I'm looking at the big shapes, right? I don't want to get too crazy too early with painting a lot of detail because I need to make the whole painting work together. So once we have a cohesive big picture, once we like the big picture, then we'll start working on the, on the finer details. And so just looking at the painting, there's some much brighter highlights down here, but we're going to, we're going to get to those in a minute. And so still painting this, uh, trying to just trying to look at how the water is shaped just as a big shape, not as individual things yet. So that's what we're doing. I'm getting a little bit lighter and that's just kind of my eye sees that you know but not back in here back in here it's a little darker there's a in fact we're gonna have to add some darks in there to make it right and I'm just gonna put a little bit of this over the top and I'm, I'm bringing my brush the shape of the wave you know so my strokes are going in the direction of the what I think the the wave is pointing on the reference photo. And so, all right, just with that little bit, it's a lot different, right? So we've got some depth, we've got, we've got some water. Now it's not great yet, but it is, it is a work of progress. So we're gonna kinda, we're gonna now, now that we have uh, this bird a little more than blocked in, so we're we're on the like a second layer of this bird. We've got the water with the second layer. Before we get crazy about the bird and the rocks, we are gonna we are gonna work on the water quite a bit. We're gonna try and uh, actually start bringing the details to the water. Normally, I tell you I'm gonna work from the back towards me, and so we'll do that for a minute. So I'm going to add just a little more of this blue and green and white. And so, and I think what we're going to do, this is a really big brush. So we, we, 
once we go down to the third layer, I start going down in sizes. And so really, I really want to stick to these smaller brushes when I start getting more paint on the canvas because we want to start getting more specific. So, and I want to add a little more water to my paint mixture, but never more than about two or three percent, really. I don't put much water, so. So now we'll see that each stroke we lay down now is going to be just a little more intentional. So, and so we can see what we're getting a little more detail with this little brush. So, a little sharper edge there. Maybe not that sharp. So, come and blur that out just a hair. All right. See a little bit of a brighter spot there. All right, so we're gonna leave that just like that. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna use two brushes on this part because I don't want to keep washing my brush out over and over again. So I'm gonna get a brush for the darker. Uh, values and one for the lighter values. Kind of a cool trick. And uh, that way I can I can start covering some ground on this water here. So, so we're going to use this brush for this lighter value here. And I'm going to get another brush. And I'm going to mix up a little more of that dark watercolor. And so, since we're further back in the background, I'm going to add just a little bit of the lighter color to it. Make it darker, but not such a contrast. So, we're shooting for something a little lighter than... There we go. So, we're going to have to go a little bit darker than that, but I kind of like that. That's not bad. Oh. spot in fact use this to our advantage there we go so a few more over here so since our paint is transparent I can actually see the the marks I made under those so so it gives me a way to Kind of duplicate those, darken them back up a little bit. So we got some darks right in here. There we go. That's kind of put it on a t-shirt. There we go. Seems to be what I like to say the most. There we go. those there's a little bit of a light spot in between but we're not pay attention to the micro details we're just going to get the big things so yeah and here's the biggest little, little wave right here there we go now yeah we want a darker Darker wave right here. I want to get a little bit larger brush. Just go back into this light color. Just mainly to kind of smooth some of these. I don't want so much, so much of a hard edge, so over some of this a little bit and that's kind of what it's about really just keep on adding layers and I'm gonna smooth some of this out it's a little too hard on the edges up here so we don't want to lose our perspective so I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna 
to start to blend some of this down a little bit. So I've got my brushes, had a little bit of paint on it, but I'm taking some off. And now we're just gonna just gonna scrub back and forth until we start getting some smoother transitions. All right. There we go. So not not too strong. So you build up the water in layers. Oh, I see there's still some people on here. Thank you all. I uh, still painting this thing. I'm glad you are watching. Hope you are enjoying this. I did lose my assistant, Glenda. I think she decided she's uh, she's gonna chill out over here. So anyway, it's all good. I'm gonna I'm gonna drink some coffee. I'm almost out of coffee. And that's not good. So we know we know this painting session is not gonna last too much longer. If I run out of coffee, that's gonna be that's gonna be a real problem. So, but anyway. Got a little shot. That that'll work. It's not not the end of the world. So we're gonna put a little we're gonna put something a little bit brighter down here. See, just as an experiment, if we like it, make some more bold strokes and decisions. That's bringing the contrast up down here. I like that. This is really not in the photos. There's not enough contrast down here to really bring a lot of interest. But I want some interest down here. So I'm going to bring, bring a lighter light and start actually working some of these areas with some lighter paint as well. Anyway, we can work on this paint for the water for hours, hours and days. So, not gonna do that to you. We're gonna we're gonna leave the water about like this for now, and we're gonna move on and actually start working on this bird's face. And so, I'm gonna have to zoom in on my reference photo. Wait, wait a second, let me do that. Oh, so we can see where his eye is. That's, that's really one of the more important features. That's what's going to really bring this bird out. And we can see that there are some little bit of a shadow under his eye. And then right under, I would say, his throat area, there's a little bit of a shadow area. So we're going to start working back into this bird's head a little bit. And uh, start making some, uh, some marks on this bird's head. I want to really brighten him up. So start to make some real contrast on this bird. So I'm going to take some some of this actual Payne's Gray and get in here tight. We're going to start to really darken this. This is the feathers on the top of this blue heron are very dark. And this is going to really bring him out of the water. Yeah, really bring him towards us. Once I put this darker darks where they go, and that's what we're going to do. So, we're going to put just a little bit darker eye spot there. Looks like it kind of goes down around about like that. So, it's sort of a shadow almost. And we know that this beak is a little darker right there. So, we're going to put that come down like this. All right. Let's connect that up a little bit. So, head's a little bit darker. We're going to make this little throat patch in here just a little bit darker. I'm actually going to make this, this line here 
about where his beak is going to end. Somewhere right in there. That's about it right there. So just kind of measure it. Let's see here. Just to see. That beak and his head. His beak's just a little bit longer than his head. And I think that's about right. So I like that. We're going to leave him like that. And he's, he's kind of looking up a little more than the picture. I'm not going to correct that, actually. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it just like it is. And now, we'll get some really pure white. And we're going to start to actually add a few accents on this thing. Just a little bit of a tuft of feathers right there. Yeah. It's pretty bright right in here. And right here. Now I'm now painting in the direction of his feathers, right? And so my strokes are in the direction, directionality of his feathers. And so it's a little bright, really. I think he may be a little too bright. So I'm going to kind of dull him down just a little bit with some of this. Desaturate him a little bit with some of this blue. Not too worried about it. Make a little better transition right in here. I know that the sun is hitting this side of the bird, so... Let's put a little highlight in here. And in fact, I'm going to get the same color we made earlier. So a little bit of magenta, a little bit of yellow. I'm not going to get a lot on my brush. Darken this up just a little more. Start to give him a little more contrast. Let's make him a little brighter. And once I get most of the paint off my brush, actually I'm going to go in here and just kind of knock that back a little bit because we got a little too crazy on the saturation for this point of the paint. So just gonna scrub that in there. You'll see that he's gonna be just a little less bright. There we go. All right. And now let's, let's put an eye in here anyway. Let's try to put a little eyeball in there. To do that, I'm actually going to get a, quite a small brush, actually. I haven't used any tiny brushes yet, but I've got this, this brush here, which is a zero. And now I'm going to start to paint a few details on this bird. So I'm going to go with this white, yellowish orange here. We're not going to paint a whole eyeball, because we just, we just can't see that much detail, so I'm just going to give it a little indication of his eye right there. That may give it just a little bit of a far side. Right? So there we go. Now, what, what a difference it makes just to put, put just a little bit of an indication of his eye, right? I'm actually going to put a little bit of that color down here in his beak because I actually like it. Right? So, well, now he's kind of looking out there, chilling. Now we need to add that shadow back to the back of his, back of his neck. So we'll do that. just a little bit of dark not too much 
Yolanda, what's happening, girl? You doing okay? It's good to see you on there. You can watch me paint. And so, in fact, I'm going to put a few streaks in here. Now I'm going to start painting, painting a little bit of hair detail. Right. Soften this guy up right here. It's a little too bright. Just going to go back and forth with the bright colors, darker colors, until I kind of like what we're doing. All right, so it was a little brighter right there. It's also just it's got this little bright patch right here. That's where the sun is picking up on the back of his neck. So we're getting that, and we're gonna get a little brighter in here as well. So. Slowly but surely. Sherry Foy, what's up? You're back, huh? It's uh, it's a work in progress. And uh, thanks for the compliment. We are still working on it. Getting some more detail in the water here. I'm going to start painting a few more details on this bird's feathers. We're starting to work on the bird. Really work on him, right? Alright, so we know that the, there's also a highlight on this bird's leg. And that's really going to make him stand out as far as his leg going down. So we're going to put that little highlight there so that we can see. We can see where this bird's leg is. There's not really much of a highlight on the other side, but I'm going to highlight it anyway. So that we can see. See what's going on with this bird. Now we're going to put a few more highlights on this bird's back. He's got a couple little bright, bright feathers working right there. But the brightest part of this bird, I'm kind of just glazing over with some, almost some pure white. It's right in here. We're going to let this bird be the brightest right in here and we're actually gonna scrub out some of this right in here and make it just really bright so that that brings a lot better detail to him we're gonna go a little bit brighter on the highlights on this side just keep bringing that intensity up with the light hitting me and i also like to kind of give this top top of the bird just a little separation and so we're gonna, we're gonna get a little brighter right here too so there we go so even though we're not painting every feather of this bird we're still getting some we're still getting some effects and so I got the little bit of white paint on my brush left and so I'm gonna kind of dull out this beak a little bit so that it's not so jump out at you and we'll use some of that watercolor to kind of carve him into the background too so I'm going to reach over and grab some of that and we're going to start to do that chisel out his beak a little bit and that's the cool thing about acrylic paint is we can kind of we can start to make some contrast happen where we want that's that's a little bit too bright huh so let's just make us a new watercolor mix right here some blue some green a little bit of white just put a little dab there so that's that's a little better so yeah we're gonna use that i like that a little better start to really sharpen this bird up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I want all that. Painting some 
painting some cool details here. We'll just kind of blend this color out over here into the water. We're not through with the water anyway, so we're going to keep on rolling. There we go. So that's uh, starting, to, starting to look like him just a little bit. So now we're going to put some real highlights in the water. Father Paul, oh, maybe send me down a blessing so, so this painting will not come out bad. Love to see you on this thing. Hello, Father Paul. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're feeling well. Everything's going good with you. Um, this is what I do on Saturdays most of the time. But I am excited to have Father Paul Sumner on the, on the live stream. That's awesome. Makes me feel good. So we're starting to put uh, a few few details in the water here. This is white. I'm just just trying to make some indications of which way this water goes. Not not every little mark is uh, just some just a few here and there up close up closer to kind of build more contrast than than what we have in the back. So. Start to start to make this this little little bit of a wave right here, and since there wasn't much interest in this actual part of the part of the water, I am going to make a few little splashes here and there, just some just something to bring a little bit of interest. Like this this wave is actually hitting the rock, and so we we needed to do something because. The actual photo just didn't capture much going on right there. So we're going to make a little, little bit of splash. And the secret to making a little bit of a splash in the water is it's not all white, right? So there's some shadowy. And then we're going to put a few pieces of white, white water coming up. Now, I've got a special brush for this. And I'm going to go grab it here. It's this thing. Check out this brush. It is terrible, right? It's all frayed out. But it has one good use. I can punch it straight down into the white paint. So just pushing it straight down. And it might pick up a little green or blue. But the cool thing about it is I'm just going to touch the canvas where I want. And it's going to make these little little chunks of water coming up give it a little bit of interest right in here all right so now I'm gonna grab just a little bit of blue and a little bit of white as well we're gonna make just a little bit of a spray so just barely touching this thing and I just think that that adds a lot of cool interest. So we're going to put a little, this is not your photo, right? And so notice how the blue is underneath. That's a good thing because that's a, that's where the light tends to not hit it as much. Now we're going to put a little white right here. There we go. Now, I can live with it. That's a little better thing to happen. And so, in fact, I'll use this brush. Still got it in my hand. It's not the greatest brush to paint details, but it's got a lot of variability. And water has a lot of variability. So I'll just kind of use this to, to make a little more interest in the water. Oh, got a little too crazy there. You know what I do when I don't like something on this uh, acrylic painting? 
is it's pretty easy, right? If I don't like something, I'll just kind of wet a paper towel and it, it'll come off if you get it pretty quick, right? If you let it dry more than about two or three minutes, it's done, it's on there. So and you just, and the cool thing is you just paint over it, right? So I kind of like this, I'll leave it for now. Just add a little more interest to what's going on around this bird. Even though it's not on the reference photo. Because once again, the reference photo is just for, just was for composition. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go away from the reference photo when I want. I'm going to do, do what I want. So should you, right? If you're painting, you're painting. If you're painting a painting, just do what you want. All right. Here we go. So we're going to get a little brighter on this rock. I think that it's time to make this rock a little bit brighter. That's not, not quite as orangey yellow as I would like. So let's get a little bit more of that kind of a mixture. Now we're just going to kind of, there we go. Some a bit brighter colors, especially at the top of the rock here. And so, since earlier we kind of made a few marks, I kind of know where these brighter colors are in the underpainting. And so, I'm just following that. I'm making a little bit harder lines here so that we can kind of see the shape of this rock. All right, same thing down here pretty bright right by this bird where he's the darkest it's interesting there's always there's always some dark where there's the light so in order for there to be light in a painting there has to be some something darker next to it or you really can't you can't get that contrast right so I'm just scrubbing around where I think the whites and the lighter colors are putting some almost like putting some highlights on these rocks here not being too specific, too crazy, but just want to give it a little more shape. So that's what we're doing. Put a little more in here. There's a little bit of a streak there, and now we're gonna paint uh, this rock a little more. We're not gonna get too crazy with it. We'll probably save the rest of this painting for another day at some point. Tamara, what's up girl? That's uh, Tamara Norris, that's uh, my wife's, one of my wife's besties from the bank. How are you doing? Send me a comment. If you're on here, if you like uh, watching uh, painting videos, but you don't want to watch them like all day long while I do it. I do put, uh, I am going to put this, this particular video up on YouTube and uh, it's going to be a, uh, you know, time lapse. So you'll be able to watch the whole painting a little quicker too. But you know, for those of you who want to hang out, chat, talk, you're welcome. And you can uh, actually share this. But if you do go to my YouTube video, I do ask one favor is that you subscribe to my YouTube. Uh, main reason it's free a, but number two is I am desperately need subscribers in order to be able to, I can live stream on YouTube if I get enough subscribers. I'm far from it, but you know, everything helps. So if you, if you go to my YouTube channel, you happen to go to my YouTube channel, then actually I would prefer you to subscribe and uh, click the notification bell. I only post videos every once in a while, so it's not like some of these channels where they hit you over the, you know, every five minutes. Oh, we got another video, another video. No, just occasionally. So, and I have some videos already there. You can get to it at uh, uh, Rick Masters Coastal Artists on YouTube. Just search for 
Rick Space Masters Coastal Artist. And I'll, uh, I'll leave a link uh, in my comment there. Yeah, or actually, I think my wife can actually comment the actual link out for you while I'm painting here. But Tamara, you said it's a beautiful painting. Thank you. I, uh, I am working on it, girl. I'm working it. We don't know yet. We don't know what it's going to be yet, but, you know, certainly we've got a good start, you know? So I'm happy with the concept of this painting. And, uh, my son told me this morning, it's like, you know, what message are you trying to convey? You know, it's just not that mystical, you know, I'm not, uh, there's no subliminal messages in my painting. There's one message in my painting, and that is if you're not out uh, looking at our coastal things that we have, then you're, you're missing out on all these cool views. If you're not out there fishing and, you know, enjoying some of the beautiful things that we have, that's, that's the message of my painting, is to get out there and actually enjoy uh, all the cool stuff that we have. I mean, there are so many... The jetties down at uh, Sabine Pass. We have, you know, obviously we're very close to Galveston. I'm very fond of that. And uh, and the lakes up at Lake Sam River. I'm going to make this a little darker. So that that shadow stands out just a little more. That's probably a little too dark, but I'll lighten it up a little bit. Cool thing is, is we can actually... Continue to work on this guy. But yeah. I'm glad you're on here with me, Tamara. Thank you so much. You've always been such a good friend. Alright, so now we're going to make this leg a little darker. So that he stands out a little better. We're going to go with the darkest darks we got here. Because this side is... We got to get us a little contrast against these rocks here. His leg is getting lost in this rock here. We don't want that. We don't want to. We don't want a bird without a leg. There we go. We're gonna get him. Now he's standing on two feet. I like that. And we're gonna we're gonna start to darken the shadow even a little more. So it just seems to be a little darker to me. And so. Just adding slowly, adding the colors I like. In fact, there's a little bit of a shadow right in here that I miss, so we'll add that in there. All right, and we're gonna make this darker underneath his feathers because there's a the distinct shadow uh, under under his tail feathers. So we're gonna kind of we're gonna play around down here as well. All right. So that stuff's looking a little better. So, anyway, I'll probably paint a few more layers on this. But uh, for now, you kind of are starting to get the sense of how I do this. So, I'm going to come in here and darken some of this up a little bit too. Just give it a little more contrast. Just a little more. And I may decide to fade it back a little bit later. I think that helps the composition. And we're going to make this a little bit darker because it's close to the water. In fact, I'm going to make this water back in here a little darker because it's in shadow. So that's the cool thing about getting that dark, dark value on your brush. And uh, you can kind of use it to move around the painting and scrub some stuff in. So I'm going to get too close to that leg there. And so, yeah. And there's some dark values right in this other rock here. Start painting some of these little crevasses on this rock here. I, was gonna, I wouldn't call them crevasses. It's not a giant, just a little piece of granite. But just give it a little, little bit of dimension, a little bit of form by putting some of this dark in at the end. And it's just going to start helping this rock take shape. So anyway, I don't know if we're ready to sign this thing yet, but I mean, certainly we have communicated 
that uh, this bird is, is kind of hanging out on the jetty. So we've got that. So I'm not far off, you know, not too far off. I might mess with the details a little bit, but I don't want to pick this thing apart too much because I don't want to, I do want to put a little bit of that green here though and, and indicate this algae growing on the rock. So not, not too much though, just a little bit because he kind of fades, uh, can't see the algae too good, but I'm gonna put just a little bit in here so we can kind of tell what's going on. And I'll come in and darken this up a little bit as we as I get closer to finishing the painting. But but anyway, I think uh, I think we've been on live for for a good. Uh, I'm not sure what time it is. An hour. Now we've been on here for almost two hours. Wow! Check it out. See how time flies when you're having fun? And uh, I want to tell everybody who came on, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I enjoy talking to people. Um, and I love to paint. So obviously, you know, let's take a look at, at where we're at here. So this is, this is two layers in, you know. I'll probably take a little break and uh, come back and you know maybe i'll paint three or four more layers but we certainly have this blue aaron walking the jetties and he's 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 looking for a really he's looking for mullets or some kind of shad that's that's what i like to think and he's gonna reach down and snatch one up or at least that's what he did when i was there so anyway thank you very much and uh uh once again uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll be helping me out tremendously. Uh, go to my YouTube channel, Rick Masters Coastal Artist. I have five or six videos there that are time lapse of whole paintings. If you want to watch those, that's cool. But uh, if you if you're not subscribed to it, uh, it helps me a lot.